Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. About four days ago, we began a series of 15 videos on the topic of work time problem. Today is our fifth video in the series, fifth out of the 15, and today also happens to be our lesson number 115. Problem for today is already on the blackboard. I'm going to read the problem to you. Once I finish reading it, I want you to pause the video immediately, as always. Pause the video immediately. I want you to solve the problem yourself. Once you have done it yourself, then resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. Do you understand? Make a habit of doing this thing, doing this every time, even if I forget to remind you. Here's the problem. We are told that A works twice as fast as B. Whether A is a person or a machine really doesn't matter. A works twice as fast as B. We are further told that B, on B in turn, works thrice as fast as C. Thrice, as we know, means three times as fast. B works three times as fast as C. E works twice as fast as C. Thrice is the word that we learn in our vocabulary video on day number 63. The question is that uh, they, further, they, go on, they further go on to tell us that if A can do the whole job, we are told that if A can do the whole job by himself in an hour, if A can do the whole job in one hour, how many minutes will it take for them, how many minutes will it take for them to do the job together, working at their constant respective paces. Do you understand? I'm going to give you five seconds to, for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Do the problem yourself. Once you have the answer, as I said, then resume the video. This question actually doesn't have any answer choices. As you can see, there are no answer choices. This question is an open-ended question. In some of these exams here, ACT, SAT, TES, TES, GMAT, and GRE, particularly on the GRE and the SAT, there is a type of question that, uh, that, uh, that you encounter which are open-ended. There are no multiple choice answer to answers there. You have to come up with your own, own answers, precise answer, and then put it in the computer, uh, the exact answer that they're looking for. That's the kind of question this is. It is not a multiple choice question, so you're going to have to come up with the exact answer. I'll give you five seconds, okay? I'll give you five seconds not to solve the problem, but I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Here we go. All right, let's see what we have. Here is the solution. We are, we are told <coughs> we are told that A takes one hour. A takes one hour. Right here. A A can do the job, the whole job, by himself in one hour. A takes one hour. If that's the case, then that implies that B must take must take two hours because A, we are told, works twice as fast as B. If A can do the job in one hour, B must take two hours. That also that that in turn implies that C must take C must take how many hours? Well, B works three times as fast as C. If B works three times, if B works twice as fast as C, and if B is taking two hours, C must take six hours. So far so good. Now we have our times. That's the first step. The very first step is to figure out how long it takes individually for each of, each of them individually to do the job. Once we have the times, next thing we have to do is find the least common multiplier, LCM. The LCM, LCM of one, two and six is simply is simply six. The least common multiplier, the smallest number that we can find that we can divide evenly by one, six can be divided evenly by one, six can be divided evenly by two, and six can be divided evenly by six. Of course we instead of six we could have put here twelve. Twelve would have twelve can be divided evenly by one, two and six, so can eighteen, so can six thousand and so can sixty billion. But that will be silly thing to do, that will be damn silly thing to do because it will just create more work for no good reason. Which is why we look for the least common multiplier. The least common multiplier here is 6. Now 6 is the magic number here. 6 is the magic number. What we're going to ask ourselves next is how much work they can do individually, working on their own in that amount of time, in 6 hours. In 6 hours, what work can we do? We, we need, let's continue here. In 6 hours, in 6 hours, 
A can do, well A only takes an hour. A we are told takes only an hour. So if he has six hours, in six hours A can do six jobs. In six hours, in six hours, B should be able to do, well B takes, B takes two hours. Therefore in six hours he can do three jobs. And in six hours, in six hours, C should be able to do one job. Because that's how long that's how long it takes. It takes him six hours to do the job. Six plus three plus one, six plus three plus one is ten. They can do ten jobs. They can do ten jobs in six hours. They don't have ten jobs to do. The question is how long will it take them? How many minutes will it take them to do the job, to do one job? If, if they can do two, 10 jobs in 6 hours, that implies that they should be able to do one job in 6 over 10 hours. 6 over 10 hours. Where can I continue? Let's continue up here. 6 over, 6 over 10 hours is same as 6 over 10 times 60 minutes. Because there are 60 minutes in an hour, that's it, we are done. Divide top and bottom by 6, uh, divide top and bottom by 10, 10 goes away and this draw, 0 drops out and we end up at 6 times 6. 6 times 6 is 36 minutes. It will take them 36 minutes to do the job if they are all working together at their respective constant paces. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.